Does anybody get a little bit more time? Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> I'm Paul. Just be considered everyone here. Yes. Sir. I'm Paul Still, one four one six seven Southwest One Hundred First Avenue, uh, Stark, Florida. I'm appearing tonight as a pro se party. I'm also appearing as my own expert witness in this case. Uh, I have a PhD in plant pathology. I spent retired from the University of Florida in 1996. Spent a little over six years working in the area of solid and hazardous waste management. <coughs> spent over 20 years uh, working on water issues here in Bradford County. Um, I've used the proposed mine site for hiking and photography, and I plan to continue using that site, uh, which is part of the Swanee River Water Management District property. Um, I've also studied a wetlands that is north of the, the proposed mine site, and uh, I plan to continue using that wetlands, uh, studying that wetlands. I might now focus on the issues with the actual permit application itself. Uh, the August 16th, 2019 a letter application for special permit for mining, Article uh, XIV, contains no information that demonstrates Connie Henderson, environmental manager, has been authorized by the Comores Company uh, to submit such an application. There is no documentation to establish that the Swanee River Water Management District, the property owner, has authorized Connie Henderson to submit the application for a special permit for mining. <laughs> it is clear no valid application for a special permit for mining was submitted on August 16, 2019. <coughs> Any documents document submitted on August 16, 2019 should have been submitted with a valid application for special permit for mining. The form that was used to uh, file the application, which was signed on 9-16-19, is called an application for special, special use permit. This is misleading because the actual application is a special permit for mining. The type of permit entered by Comores on that farm was mining heavy mineral permits. <coughs> Bradford County Land Development Regulations does not have that type of permit. The property, the name of the property owners entered on the farm by Comores was the Comores Company FC LLC as leasee for Swanee River Water Management District. No lease agreement between Comores and Swanee River Water Management District was provided. The form requires that if an agent uh, represents the owner, then a notarized letter from the owner must be attached. The letter that supposedly was that uh, authorization was not signed by the notary, nor was it dated by the notary. So in other words, there is no valid uh, designated agent uh, for uh, Comores. The application, uh, that letter also uh, refers to Daniel Lejeune of Kleinfelder as an agent, but his name does not appear on the application form. The application for special permit for farm reads, I understand that hereby swear and affirm that I own the above described property or have been duly appointed <coughs> by the property owner to make this application. There is no uh, documentation that establishes that Nicole Newell has been authorized by the Comores Company, FC LLC, to submit the application to Bradford County for a special permit for mining or to act as the agent for the property owner, Swanee River Water Management District. All of the above deficiencies would seem to leave Bradford County Commission only one option, which is to deny the Comores application for special permit for mining. There was a ring binder that was produced with the original letter uh, that was submitted in, uh, 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 I guess it was August. That ring binder has a title the Comores Company FC LLC Trail Ridge South Mine Bradford County Special Exemption <laughs> Request. 
special exemptions are defined by the lab in the land development regulations. They are uh, dealt with with procedures uh, under Articles 12 and 13 of the land development regulations. The application before you is covered under section section 14.6 uh, of the land development regulations. <clears throat> The uh, proposed mine requires a special permit for mining, and there is actually a letter in the ring binder from uh, Solian Ingram that indicates that, that this is an application for a special use permit for mining. So I'm evaluating that document as though it were a special permit for mining. There's a number of things that have to be included uh, one of which is a mining master plan, and there are a number of things that have to be in that mining master plan. The required items uh, B through E of the mining master plan are not adequately addressed in the ring binder document. The item B describe the location, which is that item B requires that they describe the location of existing or proposed processing facilities, highways, and roads, railroads. Information is not provided about the location of the dry mill or who operates the dry mill. Highways are not identified. Railroads are not identified. Key elements of the new processing facility uh, are, not are not defined, uh, particularly the industrial wastewater treatment facility and the location of the <coughs> NPDES discharge point is not defined. Item C that's required by your land development regulations uh, is to provide a topographic map of the area and its relationship to watersheds, drainage ways, floodways, streams, rivers, and lakes. Uh, there is no topographic map that addresses these issues. This is particularly important because this, ha this site has a complex drainage system uh, which includes uh, probably Lake Rowell, uh, San the Santa Fe Swamp, and possibly the Santa Fe River itself. None of this is addressed in the document. Item D that is required by your land development regulations uh, is to describe the mining process uh, to be conducted. And we've heard a little bit about that uh, tonight. And one of the things that I find particularly disturbing is that it's a little bit different. Uh, tonight's uh, presentation actually uh, was a significant improvement over what's in this document. Uh, one of the real issues with wetlands restoration is uh, the, uh, making sure that you can return the soil types, particularly the mucks, to the wetlands <coughs> that we heard tonight, that there is in fact a plan to do that, but that is not presented in the plan that was uh, presented. There's also a, uh, uh, a real issue of interpreting the land development regulations themselves. The way I read the land development regulations, the wetlands have to be returned in the same footprint where they, uh, they were pre-mining. And they have to function the same way. And the only way you can have them function the same way is they have to go back in the same place. And if you look at the figures that are presented in the uh, ring binder document, you see that the plans are not to return the wetlands to the same locations. They, they, they can, they describe an acre for acre <coughs> plan, but that's not what's required by your land development regulations. I believe they must go back into the same footprint that was there before. <coughs> Item E, uh, this uh, says to describe the reclamation process uh, to be uh, conducted. Again, that reclamation process was better displayed tonight I believe if you could, uh, uh, if that information uh, were a little bit clearer and it, it uh, may have solved some of the problems that I have, I think one of the key issues that I believe you should do, uh, what one way that I think you should respond is that they have, uh, Comores has to produce a plan that, that, that is approved by BEP for the reclamation process. It would be wise for you not to approve your uh, at worth, not to approve the application that's before you until you actually <coughs> until DEP approves that plan. 
then you will know that somebody has looked at the plan and it has been signed off on. And very importantly, <coughs> that actually coincides with uh, one of the objectives in your comprehensive plan, which is the county shall continue to require special mining permits and that such permits be coordinated with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. One of the key issues that we have before us is that your land development regulations are extremely strong with respect to wetlands. They prohibit mining of wetlands where they cannot, where it cannot be shown that they can be restored, and they have to be shown that they can be restored through substantial scientific evidence presented to the county at the time of the master mining plan is reviewed by the county commissioners. And so at this point, that had to have come to you tonight. And I don't believe, although there was a great improvement, there was no real clear and competent uh, uh, evidence that they, Camores, can <coughs> restore the wetlands. I've been on wetlands that they have supposedly restored uh, in the Lottie area, and I would not consider those restored. Uh, some of those uh, cypress trees are extremely uh, stressed at this point. Uh, there's a number of things that are really important in restoration. Some of those were covered tonight by uh, Camores. A detailed record of existing flora and fauna, a detailed survey of soil types and subsoil types, including the depth of the first aquaclude, uh, a detailed evaluation of surface flow into and through and out of the, of the uh, wetlands to be mined, a method of uh, removing and storing wetland soils and returning them back uh, to the mined wetland, and a clear delineation of the surface uh, watershed. One of the problems that we have is that uh, Camores references the, uh, delineation, the wetlands delineation, but they fail to produce that uh, document that gives the exact location of the wetlands so you know where the wetlands restorations has to occur. Um, and when we look at the figures that are in the document, which is the ring binder document that I believe you have before you, if you look at, uh, if you, you have to take these out to look at them carefully, but on uh, figure five on page 55 and figure nine, you look at those, you see that the wetlands are not going back into the same place. They're going into different locations. I think the bottom line is that even with the material that was provided tonight, you've not been provided with substantial evidence that the wetlands can be restored, and so you're left with the uh, requirement that you prohibit mining in those areas. There's a, also a major issue of ownership. Uh, the September 16th, 2019 letter from Comores, uh, the authorization letter, indicated, indicates it says, um, Camores owns the mineral rights for the property in, a, in the application. If you look at the ring binder, uh, there is a document that's called the Memorandum of Lease Agreement. That document indicates that the lease uh, appears to terminate on December 31st, 2023. Actually, Rainier owns the mineral rights. Uh, Camores only has a lease uh, to extract the minerals during the period that their lease is in, in, in power. Uh, the actual heavy mineral minerals mining lease that is between uh, Camores and uh, Rainier is not included in the materials that you have been pre presented with. I think that uh, this issue has to be cleared up before, I would suggest that it would be very important for you to clear this issue up before you proceed. And finally, there's a relationship between uh, Camores and the Swine River Water Management District. Again, I have seen no lease uh, that allows uh, the mining of uh, the, prop the Swine River Water Management District property by Camores. The uncertainty of these lease agreements 
uh, really creates a significant problem. Again, one that leaves you, I think, with no alternative other than to deny this permit uh, and uh, or uh, take further, uh, allow further uh, testimony <coughs> that, that would, could come at some other later date. I think the, the notice problem that has already been issued, uh, talked about several times is really a serious problem. Uh, it one, is one that uh, I believe puts in, in jeopardy any decision that you make. Uh, I think because of uh, the past environmental uh, regulations violations of both Comores and Twin Pines, it's going to be very important for you to understand the relationship between Twin Pines and Comores. It appears as though uh, Comores, or then DuPont, never obtained the Bradford County Special Permit for Mining when they began mining in Bradford County. Uh, this is a serious oversight. I actually filed a complaint with the county in uh, 2016. That complaint has not been responded to. <clears throat> the area in, in question, uh, the mining, of, I believe, ended up there 15 years ago, and the reclamation has not yet uh, even begun. They haven't even gotten the permit to do the reclamation at that site. Uh, given all these uh, deficiencies, I would uh, think that the only option you have is to deny this permit. There's also a couple other items that I think are problematic. Your changing of this hearing from uh, item 10 on your agenda to uh, the top item on the agenda uh, left people unnoticed because when I came here I found out it was going to be on the, by the agenda posted on the wall, it had moved to the top. When I went back and checked your website, that agenda still had uh, the Comores hearing at item 10. I believe there was also a significant people in the hall left because they couldn't hear. They had filed cards to respond. They were deprived their right uh, to make comments during this hearing. And finally, I, I believe, uh, based on my knowledge and comments that have made tonight, I would urge you to reconsider uh, what you did at the beginning of this meeting, which was reveal uh, ex parte communications, because we heard tonight that there was actually a number of ex parte communications with you, and I know personally that I have emailed you and you did not indicate those uh, communications. And so uh, I would urge you, actually, I think your best bet is to simply uh, declare this activity null and void and try to begin over. Otherwise, we're going to be locked in a very long and arduous legal debate. Thank you.